So uh, we could have gotten some intuition about the relationship between variables from the pairs plots, um, and we could have used that to choose which variables to stick into our model. But another thing is just to say like, I don't know anything about blood pressure. I'm just gonna throw all of the variables in as predictors. Um, this is sort of like the kitchen sink model. We're gonna throw everything in. And there's a way to do this in R that is a shorthand. So in order to do it, I put my response variable, which is BP, tilde, and then instead of writing out all my explanatory variables, I just use a period. And that says use every other variable that's not BP in the blood pressure data set. So if I run that and then look at the summary, I've got age, weight, BSA, duration, pulse, and stress, and I didn't have to write them all out. So that works for my, you know, sort of laziness. Um, and I could look at the, uh, the plots. I could assess it in that way. Um, it's a really small data set, so it's hard to tell what's going on with linearity and equality of variance. I don't see any major violations though. Uh, there's normality. This is looking kind of bad. Um, this is kind of that C shape. Uh, I usually skip that one. And I'm seeing, you know, 0.7 is borderline um, an outlier. So we've got some problems with our model. Um, we are explaining a lot of the variability in blood pressure. We have this really high R squared value, but we've got problems like with normality. So, um, we might want to do something else uh, with our model in terms of assessing it or um, you know, picking different variables. Um, and we know from doing the pairs plots that there could be some problems with multicollinearity. I told you in the lecture that if you have multicollinearity, then you can't trust the directionality of the coefficients. And one of the ways that we could see that in this model is that there's kind of a weird relationship here. Um, I'm saying uh, for a one beat per minute increase in your pulse, we'd expect your blood pressure to go down by 0 0.08 points. Um, and that doesn't make sense. Usually people who have high blood pressure also have higher pulse rates. And so I just uh, you know, know a tiny bit about blood pressure and that's making me think, okay, this negative coefficient, that doesn't really make sense. Um, we also have some coefficients that are really close to zero, um, and we have a lot of things that are not significant at that 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 level. So we wanna do a little more assessment. So let's uh, start by um, either looking at the correlation between the variables or using the VIF. Um, I could also do, I think I'm calling it blood P here. Um, I could do the correlation uh, of my whole data set. Let's try that again so that it all kind of comes out in a little matrix. Again, this is um, the correlations that we did not see in the base R pairs plot, but we did see in that GG pairs plot. Um, and again, um, we can see some strong correlations between like blood pressure and weight. Um, so strong correlation between BP and weight. And so we want to include weight as a predictor because it has that strong correlation. Um, we also see a strong correlation between uh, weight and BSA and BSA. And BSA was that body surface area. So I think it kind of makes sense that if you are heavier, you probably also have a larger body surface area, more skin on your body. Um, so it makes sense that those two things would be correlated, but that means that probably we shouldn't include both of them in our model. They might be explaining the same kind of variability in blood pressure. So um, don't want to include both. Uh, let's see. We also have some other moderate correlations. Um, moderate correlation between pulse and age and weight. I have this 0.61 and 0.65. Uh, there might be some other ones in here, but those are, those are things that I see off the top of my head. So, 
just kind of logicking it through. Uh, it looks like weight would be a good predictor, so I want to include that in my model. I don't want to include both weight and BSA, so maybe I, I'll just ignore BSA. Um, that's not as correlated with BP, so if I have to pick one, I'm going to pick the one that is more correlated with my response. Um, and then I might not want to include you know, pulse and age or pulse and weight. I'm including weight, so then it's like maybe I want to drop pulse. We'll see as we kind of move through our model. Um, we could also examine those relationships using the VIF. Remember that's in the uh, library car, the car package, and I could run the VIF on this model. Um, and I can see I've got a couple high VIF values. I've got a high one for weight, I've got a high one for BSA, and pretty high for pulse. Um, so one thing that you might want to do is remove uh, like all of them at once, um, but you should not do that. You should just remove one at a time. So the high ones, um, high are weight, BSA, um, and then a moderate one is pulse. Um, so then the question is, what variable should we remove from our model? You could remove weight because it has the highest uh, variance inflation factor. I would like to remove BSA um, because uh, of the, what I saw from my correlations before. So let's remove BSA. Um, and just for convenience, I wrote out the full model here so that I could just uh, remove one variable. I'm going to take off BSA. So let's call this M2. We could run that and look at the summary. Okay, so now I have more significant variables. I still have that weird coefficient on pulse. Um, I could look at the VIF. Now all my VIF values are much lower. The one on pulse is still like, it's not quite five, but it is larger than the other ones. Um, I could look at my uh, residual plots. I don't know if that's better or worse. That's maybe a little better, although now it's kind of S-shaped. Um, if we wanted to, we could go further. We've already taken out BSA. Uh, we could also take out Pulse, perhaps, um, because that had the highest, the next highest uh, VIF value. Um, we could also have taken out Duration, uh, because that is not significant. Um, I think you know it's kind of up to you. Let's let's try taking out pulse, and we could look at that summary. Ooh, that actually looks kind of like we made a bad choice because now both of these are not significant. So I'm going to put back pulse and I'll take out duration. Try that. That's looking better. Okay, so now everything is significant. This is still a little like on the edge. We still actually have that weird coefficient on pulse. Um, uh, but I could look at the VIF. Okay, um, pulse is still looking like a little bit weirdly high. Uh, that looks maybe worse again. Um, so I could I could iteratively remove pulse as well. Maybe let's just take that out. Uh, okay, now stress isn't significant, uh, but my VIF values are low. I could I could take out stress as well. Okay, so now I've just got age and weight, really low VIF. That one, the conditions look good. Um, and this, this one um, explains 99% of the variability in blood pressure. So I think we had our, our M full, M full was all the variables, and we explained 99.6% of the variability. And now I have this uh, M3. That's still explaining 99 point, well, it's 99.14% of the variability, but it's still doing really well. Um, so I would probably pick that simpler model over the, the other one because um, it makes more sense to me. The conditions look better, the VIF looks better, and it's easier to explain. Um, the residuals, yes. And uh, all good. Uh, and I would say the small model with just age and weight. So I think I've already gotten to this point of, um, of this model. 
Uh, so we don't probably need to run that. Um, we've got simplicity and conformity to our assumptions. So that's kind of this like choose, fit, assess, use framework. We chose the full model, we fit it in R, we assessed it, it looked bad in terms of the residuals and the VIF. And then we chose a different model with fewer variables and we fit it in R and we assessed it using the plots and the VIF. And maybe we removed another variable or another couple of variables and then fit that model and assessed it. So we've now gotten down to this pretty simple model that I think would be our final choice. Um, and, and we did that kind of iteratively. 